Gestational trophoblastic disease is a spectrum of tumours and tumour-like conditions characterised by proliferation of pregnancy-associated trophoblastic tissue. So what that means is essentially when the conceptus forms, uh, instead of it fusing in such a way that it creates uh, a viable intrauterine pregnancy that continues to grow and differentiate, it creates a slightly abnormal um, type of cell with abnormal genetics that leads to excessive growth and no, well, no or little differentiation. So gestational trophoblastic disease is also known as molar pregnancy and can be subdivided into either being a partial mole or a complete mole. And that definition is based on the actual cytogenetic makeup of uh, the conceptors that's formed. So a complete mole forms when two sperm or one sperm fuse with an empty egg that contains no genetic material whatsoever. When the single sperm fuses with this empty egg, it duplicates its chromosomes and forms, in the end, a 46-chromosome um, fertilized egg. The issue is that all of the genetic material within this fertilized egg is purely male, and it is this overdose of male chromosomes that leads to excessive growth. A partial mole, on the other hand, is formed when either two normal sperm or one sperm with uh, the full set of chromosomes fuses with an egg that also contains uh, some chromosomes as well, so the normal number 23 chromosomes. So this means that you end up with a huge abundance of chromosomes within this fertilized egg. It ends up being a 69XXY um, fertilized egg and again it has this overdose of chromosomal material from the male partner and hence it leads to this uh, excessive growth. So the difference between the complete and partial moles is very much based on whether it's an empty egg or an egg with chromosomes in it that fuses with the sperm, but it also tells us a little bit about what to expect essentially with regards to how it progresses. So a partial mole may actually develop some differentiation and some features of a developing uh, pregnancy. Um, however, both of these cases are completely non-viable and need to be treated. So a molar pregnancy will usually present with irregular vaginal bleeding, hyperemesis because the molar pregnancy produces a huge amount of HCG. Um, you'd notice a large for dates uterus because the mass is growing much faster than a viable intrauterine pregnancy would, and it can also cause hypertension. The investigations can, as with anything, be split up into bedside bloods and imaging. At the bedside, a urine pregnancy test is important because a patient may not necessarily know that they're pregnant at the time that they present. Bloods-wise, a serum HCG is very useful because you expect the HCG to be out of proportion to the gestation. Um, then given that this is likely to require surgical intervention, a group and save, full blood count, etc. should also be um, requested. The other thing to bear in mind is that the beta-HCG that is produced in excess by the molar pregnancy can actually have an effect on the thyroid gland as well, so patients may pr present with features of hyperthyroidism. Imaging-wise, a transvaginal ultrasound scan should be arranged, and the classical description of uh, the picture that you see is a bunch of grapes appearance. As for management, it needs to be dealt with surgically using something called suction curatage, and the patient should be followed up at a gestational trophoblastic disease center. Given that gestational trophoblastic disease arises due to abnormal fusion of gametes and leads to this um, rapidly growing ball of cells, it can actually be malignant in some, some cases, in which case it's referred to as gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. And these patients may actually require chemotherapy to manage the disease.